The book we will discuss today belongs to one of the most important thinkers of the 20th century. Exactly. That's why it's important. Popper is a really important thinker, but his contribution in terms of methodology is very important. He has theses that shake the basic concepts of both classical positivism and the Viennese circle, such as verification and induction. He certainly did a major rethink. Most of us, I think, imagine science as building up proof, right? Yeah. You pile evidence on evidence until a theory is, you know, undeniably true. The standard picture. Yeah. Accumulation. But Popper argued that way of thinking. It actually leads science down a blind alley. So we'll explore his revolutionary ideas on how science truly advances, why some common beliefs about it are, well, misguided, and how we can best approach this riddle of the world around us. It's a really fascinating journey. And you know, as Popper himself put it, thinking about knowledge wasn't just academic for him. He hoped it would help us contribute to the advance of scientific knowledge itself. Right. Practical application. Exactly. We'll see how his ideas challenge the very foundation of what so many assume about scientific progress. It pushes you to think differently about gaining knowledge. Okay, let's unpack this common assumption. First, this idea of inductive methods. You know, observing countless instances. The classic example is seeing thousands of white swans and then making a leap to a universal law. All swans are white. Right? Generalizing from specifics. But Popper radically challenged this. He said it was a fundamentally flawed and the real kicker here. His argument is that relying on induction, trying to verify theories like that, it creates an impossible situation. How so? Well, you either need an endless chain of justifications as infinite regress he talked about, or you just have to assume your starting principle is true without proof, which he called empiricism. Neither sounds very scientific. Exactly. Dead ends, according to Popper. He emphasized that if this principle of induction could be tested, science itself would disprove it constantly. You know it only takes one black swan to shatter the whole. All swans are white theory. Okay. Precisely. Verification through observation alone is shaky ground. So if constantly trying to prove our theories true is this never-ending chase? What's the alternative? How does science make progress then? Well, this is where Popper throws that curveball. Instead of asking, how can I prove this true? He asks the far more powerful question in his view, how can I prove this false? Falsifiability. Falsifiability. That's the core idea, and it's a genuine game changer for how we approach knowledge. So what does that mean for like, what counts as science? It raises that exact question. What makes a theory properly scientific for Popper? A theory of scientific only if it could be tested by experience and, crucially, refuted by experience. It has to stick its neck out, so to speak. Be vulnerable. Be vulnerable to being proven wrong. Use this metaphor. Theories are like nets cast to catch what we call the world nets. Okay, I like that. And our goal shouldn't be just to admire the net but to actively try and break it, to overthrow our solution rather than defend it, as he put it. Wow. Okay, so actively try to prove yourself wrong. That's the engine of progress for him. And that's his criterion of demarcation, the line separating science, which is testable and refutable from non-scientific ideas like metaphysics. They might be interesting, but you can't design an experiment to disprove them. Okay, but wait. How do we actually test these theories if we can't verify them? If proving them true is off the table, how do we even start the testing process? Good question. That leads us straight to what he called basic statements. Basic statements? Yeah, these are singular statements. Things like, here's a glass of water. They seem simple, right? But Popper points out that even these simple statements transcend experience because they use universals, words like glass or water. What do you mean universals? Well, they aren't just pointing to this specific thing right now. They imply a general concept, a kind of law-like behavior. We expect water behaves in certain ways. Glass has certain properties. Okay, so even this glass of water carries assumptions. 
Exactly. And crucially, we accept these basic statements not because we're absolutely 100% certain they're true. Right. But as the result of a decision or agreement, it's a bit like a jury's verdict in a trial. The scientific community agrees provisionally that this observation holds for the purpose of testing the theory. So science is like a courtroom. Theories on trial, basic statements as evidence. But the jury has to agree on the evidence first. A useful analogy, yes. Theory, he argues, really dominates the experimental work from start to finish. Okay, so if we can't verify and basic statements are agreed upon rather than absolutely true, how do we judge if a theory is any good? Does simplicity play a role? It does, but maybe not how you'd first think. Popper connects simplicity directly to a higher degree of falsifiability. More simple means more falsifiable. Seems counterintuitive? Think about it. A simpler theory makes bolder claims. It forbids more things from happening. Kepler's initial idea that planets move in perfect circles is simpler than, say, complex epicycles. But it's also much easier to prove wrong with precise observations. One deviation and the circle theory is out. A complex theory can often wiggle out of contradictory evidence. I see. So simplicity makes it easier to shoot down if it's wrong? Exactly. It helps us get rid of false hypothesis most quickly. So the success of a theory isn't about proving it true, but about its corroboration. Corroboration? Yeah. It's basically a report card. It summarizes how well the theory has stood up to tests so far, and importantly, how severe these texts were. So it's not about probability, like this theory is 90% likely to be true. No, not probability in that sense. It's about resilience. Yeah. How much rigorous testing has it survived? How many attempts to falsify it has it withstood? That's a tricky one, though. What about concepts like probability? You can't really falsify a statement like, there's a 50% chance of rain, right? One outcome doesn't disprove the probability itself. That's an excellent point, Popper acknowledged. Probability statements aren't strictly falsifiable in that direct way. So how does his system handle them? He argues we make a kind of methodological decision. We decide as scientists not to just explain things away as pure random chance, as accumulations of accidents. We still look for underlying causes. Yes. We still strive to find testable, falsifiable laws that might explain those probabilities, even if the probability statement itself isn't directly falsifiable in one go. We seek the underlying, falsifiable explanation for the patterns we see. Okay, that makes sense. What really stands out to me from all this is how Popper just completely reframes scientific progress. It's not this calm accumulation of certainty. Not at all. It's more like a continuous critical struggle, a process where we actively, deliberately try to prove ourselves wrong. You have to be brave enough to put your best ideas on the chopping block. That perspective is absolutely crucial. Science advances for Popper not by induction, but by what he called a quasi-inductive process. Quasi-inductive? Yeah. We make these bold guesses, new unjustified and unjustifiable anticipations, he called them. And then we try our hardest to prove that our anticipations were false. So it's driven by criticism, competition. The free competition of thought is, he put it, it's dynamic. It's evolving. It's certainly not about finding final absolute truths. So the takeaway for you listening might be this. Next time you encounter a scientific claim, maybe don't just ask what evidence proves this true. Instead, try asking how could this be proven false? What experiment, what observation could potentially disprove it? It's a really powerful shift in perspective, isn't it? Encourages genuine critical thinking. Definitely. Yeah. It really challenges us all to constantly question, constantly test, and always try to refine our understanding, knowing that, you know, there's always more to learn, always the assumptions we need to drag out into the light and examine critically. It fosters a kind of intellectual humility and a relentless search for better explanations, even if we know they'll never be perfect or final. Exactly. The quest continues. Mm -hmm.